Hey guys, what's going on? Optimus Tom here from GG Chronicles, standing on the main stage at MLG Dallas with two very fun gentlemen next to me, Froggin and Big Fat LP, both AP mids for a CLG team. We're going to be talking a little about what just happened on the big screen in the main stage, as well as just a couple of you guys' thoughts on what's going to be going on, basically with AP mid matchups and overall team cons. We've seen a lot of different things going on in the metagame. So first off, Froggin, I want to start with you very quickly. You guys just won a very impressive, very long best of three series against your sister team and they pulled out an interesting kind of split push composition. I know you talked to Monte Cristo on the main stage just a little bit about what was really going on in your head to combat it but how did you guys really adapt and adjust to what they were throwing at you? Um, we're used to it from all the other teams but like our strategy was kind of split pushing too so we countered that way because we were stronger than them like one on one straight up. And LP, when you guys were going into this kind of split push strategy, saw you guys heavily pinging the Nexus in game number three. Was this something you guys had planned on doing the entire game or something you guys just had to adapt to because of the circumstances? We don't actually always want to split push so hard, but it's just an individual tunnel on it so hard. No matter how much advantage we have, that we would still want to uh, split push just because of uh, some individual. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, apparently there was a little bit of a shot calling going on there for the split push, but you guys still had a very heavy team engagement. You, of course, had the Orianna ultimate to the command shockwave. You had Curse of the Side Mummy to go in there. Was there ever a point in time where you felt like you were just stronger in a team fight? Oh, there, for the first up to until like 20, 30, 40 minutes, we were actually all, all, all a lot stronger. Like their Maokai got uh, messed up pretty hard in the jungle. They lost oracles and he died again and again and lost a lot. At a lot of points we were actually stronger. If we just like five men, we don't have to like full split. If we just five men and fight and initiate on our own and like we can even kill, kill Wicked. A lot of times we were too scared and we, we could have just blow Wicked up. This late in the game, he's not really, he can't really tank five people just hitting him straight up. But to, to that to happen, we need like Hotshot to like straight up taunt him or something when he wants out. But he's never there. <laughs> oh. Well, unfortunately, I did actually get a chance to listen to you guys during Team Select from CLG. You were talking about taking away that Malphite from the Orianna with that little wombo combo that NA has been throwing at you. Did you also want to secure that Malphite just to disrupt the Orianna ultimate as well? Or was there any other semblance just besides taking it away? Yeah, Orianna gets countered by Hard Engage and she's really good with hard and gay, so there's like two big reasons to take Orianna, uh, Malphite away from Orianna. Okay. So speaking of Orianna, you guys in game number one, you went with a double AD composition because you had mentioned something along the lines that Corky, I believe it was, takes a poop on Orianna in the mid lane. So was that just your overall strategy was trying to shut down Orianna? Um, no, Corky is really good at split pushing and he's really good at Shen and against Orianna. So we can basically use a winning matchup to get like 50, 60 C, um, CS ahead and then we can use him in split pushing against Shen and he can two, 1 versus 2 too because he's just like he's just on Shen pretty much. And how mad were you guys that Shen kept dying to Corky? Uh, well the first game was, I mean that game wasn't that bad mm -hmm. as the last game but all we heard was trust me, I won't die to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps putting a little bit too much trust in certain people. However, in game number two and three, you came back with an Ari pickup, which did basically the same exact thing to Shen, but you had the charm on top of everything else. Was that also planned out? Um, it was more the thing that Ari can get to um, the AD cap really, really easy. Mm -hmm. Like jump in with um, ultimate, Q, W, and with death back grasp, and it will take at least like 70% of the AD carries health. Also in late games, so. It was basically our strategy to just get the double lift down with that Nuno buff. Going back to Ari and Oriana both being picked up in this, uh, the game two and game number three, there's been a lot of Ari and Oriana play in either tournament play or online. A lot of people like on the internet, in Reddit, wherever you are out there, have really been kind of thrown back and forth which character is kind of superior in the matchup. So just really quick, I want to ask you guys, since you played Ari in both of those games and you played Oriana, what are the two kind of strengths of that character and weaknesses in that matchup? I guess I'll start with you. <coughs> Well, Ari doesn't really, I mean, uh, Ori doesn't really get to roam as much, but <coughs> I guess can control the lane a little better. And team fight, Wombo Combo is always fun. You can always yell when you Wombo Combo. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the advantages or disadvantages that Ari has going against Orion and the Wombo Combo? Um, basically, it gets to the point where if Ari gets a hit, Orion is doomed. 
because Rihanna is like kind of a champion. She can like all her damage is pretty much poke damage. It's not like super high nuke damage, so. But she can get used in a bumble combo because she has the knockout from her ultimate, will basically be enough. That's why. Like. And we actually saw a little bit earlier in the tournament, we saw a Orianna who built a Deathfire Grasp and just kind of put out a little bit extra damage. Was that something that's a little more team con specific or is it something just a little bit different style of building Orianna? I actually think it's fine. <laughs> it's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so out there, if you uh, want to get a Deathfire, well, maybe not now, considering we're no longer on the Kha'Zix patch. Maybe it's not worthwhile after all. But uh, one more question to wrap this up, because everybody's fairly tired, fairly hungry, and very sober. I'm going to end this one on a note. Both of you guys playing mid lane for a CLG team. Which one of you is better? I'm better. <laughs> he's better at farming. <laughs> oh, he's better at farming. <laughs> You get it just just farming? That's it? He's only better at farming? Yeah. <laughs> I play whatever I want in mid. I'm not limited to AP champions. Ooh, so does that mean you're gonna try picking up Lee Sin anytime soon? Uh if my team wants, I don't care. You just tell them to trust you, you'll be fine. <laughs> Alright guys. <laughs> Alright guys, once again, thanks for tuning in to Optimus Tom. I've been here with Frog and a Big Fat LP. Both AP mids are mids anyway for both respective CLG, CLG teams. If you guys want to keep up on our coverage, make sure you check out ggchronicle.com for more interviews and up-to-date information on MLG Dallas and then some.